Okay, what is the church? Uh, let's turn uh, Matthew chapter 16. Verse 13 to 20. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 20. Here we can see the first mention about the church by the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church. Verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked, his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elia Elias, and others, Jer Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I, will, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Amen. Uh, here we can see the what the church is. We can see the origin of the church. Especially, let's see uh, chapter 16, verse 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, three things. Upon this rock I will build. The second. I will build my church. Third, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, this is the elements of the true church. What is the this rock? Jesus Christ built his church upon this rock. What is the this rock? Roman Catholic Church said, this rock is the Peter himself. They said Peter is the first pope of Rome. So they are a uh, descendant of the apostle, uh, of the apostle Peter. So they had the authority. They had the key into the kingdom. Is it true? Here, uh, verse 16, uh, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is the first compassion of the saints uh, to about the Lord Jesus Christ. The confession. Okay? This is very good and sound doctrine. Verse 18, uh, da, that thou art Peter. Uh, in Greek, Peter is the Petros, the masculine singular. This is the very small stone, Petros. And here, and upon this rock, it's not Petros. In Greek word, this is the Petra. Very huge rock 
Upon this rock we can build the big house, big temple. So it means the Peter cannot be a uh, this rock. I believe this rock is the compassion of the Peter. So the Lord Jesus Christ, He built uh, His church upon this rock. It means He built upon the doctrine, the confession of uh, Peter. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's very, very important. The church lost this compassion. This is not the church anymore. No foundation. It falling down, collapsed down, a corruption, apostasy. So this is very, very important. The first element of the church is the sound doctrine. No sound doctrine, this church is not anymore the church of Jesus Christ. Because the Lord built, established his own church upon this law. The sound confession of faith. So the faithful church must have the sound doctrine. So the liberal churches, modernized churches, they lost this sound doctrine. They do not believe Jesus is Christ, is the Christ, Jesus is the Son of the living God. They do not believe that. They said Jesus Christ is just the man, simple man like us. He cannot be our savior. So actually, they have a church building, rituals, or sacraments, everything they have. But a different version of the Bible. We are using the King James Version. They are using the modern versions. It's different. But nevertheless, they had the Bible, but they never believe in Jesus Christ in the Bible. No sound doctrines. So this church is not the church of Jesus Christ. I believe this is the synagogue of Satan. So can he have any fellowship with them? They are not Christians. They also make uh, one, uh, the false churches. The, this movement we call this the ecumenical movement. They make a one house, big house, without the gospel, without Jesus Christ. So they invite every religion. They invite the Muslims, they invite the Buddhists, now they invite also Confucianists. All the religions come together in one house. So they call themselves WCC. What is WCC? World Council of Churches. But these churches, it's not Christian churches. Every meetings, the Muslims and Buddhists, also Christians. What kind of Christians? They are not believing in Jesus Christ. This is the first church. But genuine church always has the sound doctrine, sound, the confession of faith. This is the first element of genuine church. So doctrine is most important thing for the genuine and faithful churches. The second is the ownership of the Lord, of the church. The Jesus Christ said, I will build my church. So we believe in that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. We are the, the body of Jesus Christ. So head is most important thing in our body. It controls every part of the body. So I see you. And I must, uh, I have to stretch my hands and shake hands with you. 
But my brain said, okay, shake hand. But my body against my brain and I hit your cheek, okay? So it's uh, something wrong, right? So body must obey to the head, okay? It means we, the church, the body of the church, the must obey all the commandment of Jesus Christ because he is the owner of the his own church. So we call our church Bible Presbyterian Church. We have uh, presbyters in the church, the elders. But actually the pastor and elder is not the owner of the church. We are the servant. We are the people of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We call Jesus the Lord and the Savior, right? We have to obey to our Lord. But someone said, of course, Jesus Christ is my Savior, personal Savior. But He is not my Lord. What's this? He said, I was saved by grace, but I want to live according to my own will. As a Christian, I don't know. But we must obey to the Lord. He is the owner of the church. Even the congregational church said, the owner of this church is the congregation, not pastor, not elder. Is it true? I do not believe that. The every church's owner is the Lord Jesus Christ. We must obey to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to know the will of the Jesus Christ. Of course, church has the some order, some systems. We have to obey the higher authorities. The, in the house, in the school, in the church, in the nation. Every authority comes from highest authority, the God. Church also, highest authority is the Lord Jesus Christ. Every pastor, every elder, every congregation must obey to the Lord. He is the Lord. This is the ownership of the church. The third, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It means uh, church must have good fight to defend the sound doctrines. You know, the Satan is very uh, clever and very cunning. Eh? So he want to destroy the genuine church. He never want to destroy the first church because they are already serving the Satan. So he focus on the genuine church to destroy how? Bring the false doctrines and the false teachers, false pastors, false doctrines. So how can we do? From outside and inside, these false teachers will appear before us. What can we do? Fight. Good fight to depend sound doctrines. Finally, we will win. Why? The Jesus Christ, He promised us, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in His word. He will bring us final victory. But we have to do our responsibilities. What's that? It's fighting good fight. 
against these false doctrines to defend our church because until today the Satan always bring difficulties and false things to destroy our true church. So if we are the servant of the Lord, very, very careful because the Satan always try to destroy our ministry, our church. So some BB churches, they falling down again and they astray from the old past in where our ancestor of the faith they walked in. Just very, very careful. So remember, what is the church? Don't forget. Then you can survive from all the attacks from Satan. So, where is true church today? Uh, it's a very shameful story in my country. Actually, we start uh, the BP Church same time with Singapore BP Church. So my father-in-law, he graduated from the Faith Theological Seminary in Korea. The same uh, name with the Faith Theological Seminary in USA. The seminary for Bible Presbyterian ministers. It means the Korea had the Bible Presbyterian Church and Bible Presbyterian seminaries. Still, my seniors, they had a very, very sound doctrine until today. Their the eschatological position is premillennialism. They want to preach from the Bible. They had the same uh, theological positions. But now, officially, there is only one Bible Presbyterian church in Korea. Not from Koreans. It's actually Singapore BP Church uh, passed to the torch of the truth into Korea. This is uh, our brother, Park Jung Il, graduate from Firestone Bible College, but very small church. I don't know, se several years I always visit him, uh, but his church members only his own families. But now I'm not sure. But faithfully uh, preaching the word of God. Only one BP church. No seminary, no Bible college, no BP church anymore. Why? How about the United States of America? The Baptist church in USA, they, sometime they had a good the position of theology, but how about the Bob Jones University? Now today, they deny the perfect Bible also. How the pre-Presbyterian church in Northern Ireland, Ian Richard Kyle Paisley, they had some problem also. How about the Bible Presbyterian church in Singapore? Divided because of the doctrine of perfect Bible, bubble plenary preservation. Some Bible Presbyterian church minister in Singapore, they deny the perfect preservation of the Bible. Everywhere, a pastorship. Everywhere, collapse down, falling down, this appear, the genuine church. Now getting smaller and smaller. I believe it is time very near of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Very rare to find genuine church, very rare to find true believers around the world. The 50 years ago, a lot of 
fundamentalists, a lot of conservative Christians. But today they say we are conservative, we love God, we are teaching the Bible, but their theological position is not formed. That's very, very problem. Nowadays, some good uh, leaders in Bible Presbyterian churches in Singapore, we have the like Dr. Jeffrey Ku, Reverend Kwek Sanyu, uh, Reverend Daskosi, and Tan Kiang, some uh, our leaders. But how about the next generation? Are you sure? Next generation can hold, keep the truth until another generation, next generation. Are you sure? Nobody knows. So I uh, encourage my daughter to write down the failure of the Korean Pre Bible Presbyterian Church. Why they fail to keep the truth? Why they disappeared on today? Singapore BB Church must learn from the failure of Koreans. Now, I'm a fundamentalist, I'm a BP minister, but I am not in Korea. Now I am in Africa. Also, Reverend Makim, he also fundamentalist. Eben Yun also fundamentalist. We are very proud of, of the name of fundamentalist. But all in Africa. So now we are building the Bible Presbyterian Church in Africa, not in Korea. It's very funny, you know. Anyway, the Lord bless us and grant us the fighting spirit for the truth so we can keep the truth to next generations. Okay. Uh, this class is an apologia for biblical fundamentalism. Because a whole lot of misunderstanding and distortion against biblical fundamentalism today. So nowadays someone said, I'm a fundamentalist as a mockery in Christianity. The majority, they hate fundamentalists. Why? They said fundamentalists, they are loving fighting. But why they never think why fundamentalists were fighting? They were fighting against unbelief and liberalism and modernism. But nowadays the Christians, they never rebuke and never say to modernists to repent. But they just blame, they just mock. The fundamentalist, yeah, you still has uh, the old way, old past, but we believe in the old past, we can find the way of salvation. So this is uh, all the misunderstanding and distortion. So we have to learn and we have to know what is the biblical fundamentalism from the Bible. So we can say something to the others who against us. Because they never, uh, they has never the good knowledge about the fundamentalism. Generally, fundamentalism is used to designate various radical phenomena of religions. Uh, Islamic fundamentalism or Hindu fundamentalism, uh, this kind of things. But it's wrong, actually. It's not new uh, phenomena. This is all the way. It's from uh, 100 years ago. The fundamentalism was 
started. What is biblical fundamentalism? Uh, I already told you, biblical fundamentalism is Christianity itself, which is based on the Bible, the Word of God. So we uh, love God's Word, and we trust only God's Word. We obey to God's Word. The controversy of fundamentalism, many people who say about themselves uh, conservatives, they always follow the men, the people, the denominations. But fundamentalists always follow the word of God. We did not follow any man. We did not follow any denominations. Why? Sometimes the man, something wrong. We cannot trust 100% any man. Even you cannot trust yourself. We have to trust the word of God only. We must obey the God's word. But one great man there, everyone follow the man. Sometimes he make the mistake, they say, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, we'll follow him. Even the Bible never teach them follow wrong things, false. But they never obey the God's word. That's the problem. So something wrong, we have to point out, and we must uh, make the line, okay? And we have to encourage them, repent. Come back to the Lord. Come back to the Bible. How about the denominations? Very wrong. Now PCUSA, the most liberal denomination in the United States of America. Actually, this church was the very, very conservative denominations. But now, we cannot work with PCUSA. Liberals, they do not believe in Jesus Christ. Even they allow the homosexual pastor as a pastor, ordination. What's wrong with them? Not today. From 100 years ago, they started the apostasy. The term fundamentalism was derived, derived from American Christianity. It's not comes out from Muslim. So we start the fundamentalism. The first usage of fundamentalism was very good. Good meaning, positively, not negative meaning. So we can know what is the fundamentalism. And to know its origin, it should be focused on the Presbyterian Church in USA, where it's been the battlefield for the controversy between biblical fundamentalism and other isms since the beginning of 20th centuries. Uh, of course, the congregational churches and the Baptist churches and Methodist church, every area there was the battle for the faith, the controversy of fundamentalism. But especially the Presbyterian church in USA was the main battlefield for the controversy of fundamentalism. So we are focusing on the Presbyterian Church history in USA. And another reason is this uh, Presbyterian Church, the Singapore Bible Presbyterian Church comes out. Okay? So we have to learn this the Presbyterian Church in USA. We can trace back our root also. So you have to remember the name Carl McIntyre or the J. Gresham Machen, or the Baswell. They are all belong to in uh, Presbyterian Church in USA. So it's very, very important to know who we are, where we come from. Okay. 
So two objectives, uh, knowing on the brief history of fundamentalism from Dr. Gresham Machen via Dr. Carl McIntyre to Dr. Timothy Toh. So Dr. Timothy Toh, he was a disciple of the Carl McIntyre. He was a very great man. And why? They came out from PC USA. We will learn why they established the Bible Presbyterian Church in USA, and why they uh, established the Faith Theological Seminary. Okay. Uh, another object is the, to remove a false and unjust accusation that has been attached to the name of fundamentalism. After this call, you learn the fundamentalism, you will have the pride of the name of fundamentalism. So now I'm saying I am a fundamentalist. Okay? Uh, value of fundamentalism. It is true that true fundamentalists are a minority in this world, even in Christianity. However, they fight for the good fight, for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Fundamentalists hold on to the truths of the Bible and the traditions of the historical Christianity. Not liberals. Okay? We had a tradition in everywhere, in our theology, in our customs, also our Bibles. We are using the traditional text called Byzantine text and Textus Receptus from the beginning of the church. We have the, this Bible. This is the tradition of the Bible. But now the, the other Churches, the other side, they are using corrupted text. And they are using modern uh, versions. We are using the still King James versions. Reformation Bible. It's true. We still hold on the truth in our hand from the Bible. We have the same face uh, with the apostolic church, apostolic faith. But liberals, they uh, harmonize all the biblical truths with the worldly concept. They said the progressions and they said evaluation of the truth is the most important thing and adjust the doctrine to the world to have them. But finally, they lost the salvation, salvation knowledge. So nothing different, different from the world. In their church, that's not the preaching. That's the uh, some philosophy of the life and the they are not preaching, but this is address. Uh, like a prime minister, they speak anything they want. Right? Something wrong? But the church also same. The, uh, this is a very famous word. The, the Lord God uh, made the worship service. But Satan made the chapel in university. Do you know Christian university? Uh, they must preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, but they never, you know. They brought all the worldly people and gave them the time they address all the worldly philosophies. That's not the church. The liberal churches, they never preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even they deny the gospel of Jesus Christ. They became the enemies 
of the cross, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what can you do? The truths not depend on the numbers. Okay? They are majority. Now, how many percent are Christian in the world? 10% or 20%? 30%? Not majority, minority, you know. In, but in Christianity, the fundamentalists, they also minority. All the, the others, they are belong they are into the liberal denomination or new evangelicals, the charismatics, right? But we are very conservative and fundamentals. How many churches in the world? We can count it even. Not all the BP churches in Singapore, right? So some churches of Singapore, BP churches, they are still have the truth from the apostolic church. But the others, they already denied. This is the value of the study of fundamentalism. So do not make the same, do not make the same mistake in your future ministry. Protect your church, even protect yourselves. Okay, let's go to brief history of the Presbyterian Church. The origin of the Presbyterian Church should be traced back to the Reformation. What is Reformation? Uh, this is the from two words, re plus formation. A reformation means a return back to original formation. Why? The medieval church, Roman Catholic church, became another religion. So the reformers, they want to go back to original form of the Bible, ancient church, apostolic church. So they call this movement Reformation. So you have to know the true meaning Reformation. Reformation is not make new things. It's a return back to all the past, all the way. The original truth in the Bible, apostolic faith. Also, this time, same time, we have to remember the Renaissance. The Renaissance means uh, also the came out from two words: the re plus naissance. Uh, re again, naissance means is born, birth. It means rebirth or reborn. What what is the rebirth of reborn? This is not new. Also, this is old one. Rebirth means they want to have all the thing today. This is Renaissance. So, but the uh, northern part of Europe, they focus on the Reformation, but southern part, they focus on the Renaissance. The Reformation, uh, run by the reformers, the priest, or the clergyman. But Renaissance, uh, related with the secular, uh, scholars, like, uh, Erasmus. And he was, uh, emperor or prince of, uh, humanist, humanism. Okay? So different, slightly different. The same age, but same, uh, different focus. So, uh, the, uh, ancient uh, people of the Reformation and Renaissance, the people, they were thinking the ancient was age, ancient era, ancient age was a golden age. So they want to return back to golden age. So we are related with the golden age, ancient era. So we are modernized man. Our era is a modern, okay? Modern means a new era. 
So they want to point out the middle. This is a medieval age. Okay. So they want to deny Roman Catholic Church. So, but the two words, via antiqua, via moderna, via means the way, antiqua is the old. Via moderna means uh, new, uh, way of the new. Okay? But the modernism means, the new means, in the theological terms, actually the Roman Catholic said, the via moderna is the way of the heretic. So until today, the Roman Catholic Church say to the Protestant Church is the heretic until today because they are working on via moderna. They are working via antiqua. But it's wrong. Because Roman Catholic Church genu truly, truly, it is the via moderna. Via antiqua is comes from the Bible, the apostolic faith. Okay? This is actually via antiqua. So they said to us, you are the heretic, you are heresy, uh, you are Working on via moderna, but we say no. We are following all the way. We are working on the via antiqua in the way in the Bible. Okay, so Roman Catholic cannot blame us because they already make their own way via moderna. So modernism, it means very serious meaning, not just uh, today's all the ideology, okay? This is related with the uh, heretical view. So they deny all the uh, fundamental doctrines and they adopt all worldly and false doctrines. We call this via moderna or modernism. Okay, liberalism is uh, apply all the areas in the world. They are thinking very liberally. Okay, they are living liberally. This is a liberalism. Okay, but the liberalism. Uh, modernism actually the same concept. But religiously, modernism is a more serious term. Okay, soon after the Reformation, the Protestantism was divided into two main streams. The one is Lutheranism following the theology of Martin Luther. Uh, do you know the Luther? Uh, his 95 thesis you can find in the library. If you uh, sleepy, uh, go and stand and read carefully 95 thesis. And after him, we have another great man is John Calvin. Calvinism following the theology of John Calvin. He's a very uh, good man. Uh, he is the, actually he is the father of the Presbyterian Church. We still, until today, we are learning a lot of things from John Calvin. Uh, Martin Luther, he was an Augustinian German monk and professor of theology. Uh, he wrote down 95 theses in 1517. It is the, the time of the uh, Reformation. But today the Lutherans, they says Luther made some mistakes. And now today's Lutherans must come back to Roman Catholics 
and make the reunion with Roman Catholics. How come to this? They never, never understand the what Roman Catholic Church is. A Roman Catholic Church never, never recant their wrong doctrine until today. It's the same or something worse than the time of Reformation. But now the Lutherans, the descendants of Luther, they want to go back to Roman Catholic Church and reunite with Roman Catholic Church. What happened to them? Because they lost all the spirit of Martin Luther and they forsake all the legacy. Of Luther. So it is very, very important to remember good things. Of course, doing something good is very good, right? But the most important thing is the remembering good things. They were fighting against the false doctrines. They were fighting. They against the Roman Catholic churches. But nowadays, all the descendants of Martin Luther, they said, our forefather Martin Luther, he was wrong. He made a mistake. We must, he must remain in Roman Catholic Church. It is time to return back to Roman Catholic Church. Is this right? No. John Calvin, the most of Presbyterian thing that Calvin or Calvinism was the root of Presbyterianism. The another name of Calvinism today is the Reform theology. But today, I told you our days. The Calvinism is the same with the fundamentalism. Because we are believing in same doctrine, same biblical truth. Uh, his famous book is Institute of the Christian Religion. This is the summarized his theology. Calvin published the first edition of his, this book, the Institute of Christian Religion, at 27 years old in 1536. He was a great man. Uh, his emblem is very impressive because you do, uh, do you see the hands here and heart upon the palm? And we can read some words. This is the motto of John Calvin. Coromel TV of Ferro, Domine, Prompte et Sincere. It means, my heart I offer to you, Lord, promptly and sincerely. Uh, he was very skinny and very sharp man, and he published uh, a lot of the book of doctrine. So some people is, uh, are thinking he is very uh, cold blood man. Okay, so he has no heart; only he has the mind. I was thinking actually. But after see this emblem, he take out his heart on his hand. In his hand, he said, My heart I offer to you, Lord, promptly and sincerely. A very wonderful testimony. He, he has the zeal for the Lord, for the word of God. He spent his life to preach the word of God to his people. He make 
the city, the Geneva, uh, the city of God. Literally, all the people in Geneva they must worship the Lord. They must follow all the law of God. That time, we never, never find this kind of city in the Christian history. Is work of John Calvin. He was working in Geneva in Switzerland. Uh, he was the leader of Reformation. Calvin preached at St. Pierre Cathedral. Even though this uh, church had a cathedral, this is not the Roman Catholic uh, church building. This is the Reformed Church. The main church at Geneva in Switzerland. Calvin has developed Presbyterian systems, but now the Reverend Markim's daughter, uh, uh, younger daughter, now she is working in UN. So the one headquarter is now Geneva. So Reverend Markim, he visit the John Calvin Church, Saint P. Saint Pierre Cathedral. It means Saint Peter Cathedral. But now, a few people. And also preaching. It's not conservative. Okay? The normal John Calvin, normal spirit of Calvin. It's a very sad story. And John Calvin taught us four orders of ministerial function. He introduced us the first, the pastors. The second, doctors, is teachers, okay, Bible college. And third, elders. And fourth, deacons. We, the Presbyterian church, a BB church, uh, follow these orders, right? So pastor to preach and to administration to administer the sacraments and doctors or teachers to instruct believers in the faith. So today the Bible College lectures. Okay? So I heard Dr. Jeffrey Ku he ordained first time not as a pastor, as a Bible college teacher, doctors. And now we have to point out more teachers. It teaches not Sunday school teachers. This is ordained ministers. So they must teach the doctrines and systematically. Uh, so all the people must run from them. This is a different ministry from preaching. Of course, pastor can be a doctor also. So it is very good. Every uh, believers in BP churches, they relate with the Firestone Bible College and short time or full time, even the, the night class is very good. It will make the church uh, stronger and stronger. They will have the strong conviction of the sound doctrines. The doctrine is none other than systemized the teaching from the Bible. It's actually Bible itself. Okay, so don't despise the doctrines. No doctrine, they say doctrine make a man a very dry, okay, dry man, but it's wrong. I learned from John Calvin. He was a man of doctrine, but he loved the Lord with his burning heart. Remember this. So don't despise doctrine. They said we need just the love, but without the doctrine, the love will be failed. Okay? Love with doctrine, the others. You can edify someone. You can give them the salvation knowledge. Now they don't know. Uh, they want to evangelize, but they don't know the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
even. What's this? Now there is the problem in the mission field, no? Uh, especially the Tanzania, my place, we can find a few the ordained minister, the others all layman uh, missionaries. They brought a lot of money and spread the bread, but no gospel message. So they can do nothing. Just give them the food and they are building the school and hospitals, but they never preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's going on? I do not despise them. I encourage them. Uh, bring the gospel of Jesus Christ with the bread. They need the bread and education, hospital, but they also need the gospel of Jesus Christ. With the gospel of Jesus Christ, we cannot bring them to heaven. A very, very serious problem in mission field. So, I encourage you, you are trained very well in the Faison Bible College with a good doctrine. Please come to mission field. We really, really need you. I want to work with the graduate from Firestone Bible College. Same mind, same doctrine, and same spirit. We are not fighting each other because of doctrine. We need the minister of gospel, minister of the word of God. Please come to Africa. They need the gospel. Of Jesus Christ. And third is elders to provide discipline. And fourth deacons to care for the poor and needy. So this is four orders of ministerial function by John Calvin. But now today the Bible Presbyterian Church follow these orders. Pastors, doctors, elders, and deacons. Okay? So we are descendant of uh, John Calvin. So we have to study some more from him. Uh, five solas in the day of Reformation Day. First sola scriptura. Second sola fide. Third sola gratia. Uh, fourth, solus Christus or solo Christo. And soli deo gloria. We call these five solas. By scripture alone, by faith alone, by grace alone, Christ alone, or through Christ alone. So, uh, sola scriptura, this is a feminine ablative. Sola fide also, uh, feminine ablative. Sola gratia also, Ablative. Ablative means uh, by means. Okay. So by scripture alone, by faith alone, by grace alone. But uh, solus Christus. This is masculine singular, a nominative. Okay. So someone says sola Christus is wrong. Solus Christus. Or if it is the ablative, it must be solo Christo. So through Christ alone. And solely their glory, glory to God alone. Uh, do you remember uh, the first question of Shorter Catechism of Wisdom, Westminster Shorter Catechism? Eh? What is the end of man? The glorifying God, right? So this is the, the solely their glory. This is our destiny, our purpose of life. So don't forget, we are the descendants of the Reformation. We are accept the Westminster standards as our standards of faith. So we have to remember, memorize, and follow. So whatever we do, we must remember glory to God alone. Uh, John Calvin, he has a very good disciple. 
named uh, John Knox. John Knox, he was a Scotch, Scotchman. He brought all the doctrine, all the theology of John Calvin into the Scotland. He was a Scottish clergyman and a leader of the Protestant Reformation, brought Reformation to the church in Scotland. In Geneva, he met Calvin from whom he gained experience and knowledge of reform theology and Presbyterian policy. So remember John Calvin and John Knox. Our Bible Presbyterian Church also came out from the Scotland Presbyterianism. So in USA, our ancestor, very fundamental and conservative Christians, comes from Scotland and Northern Ireland, not from England. Okay, England, a lot of people comes to USA, America. They were descendant of the Puritans. But Puritans, majority of Puritans was not Presbyterians. They were all the congregational, came out congregational church. Okay? So don't confuse. Puritan was not our ancestor of faith. Our forefathers came from Scotland and Northern Ireland. Remember this. Uh, John Knox at the Reformation World Monument. Uh, you can you visit the uh, Geneva. You can see the monument. Okay, the Calvin and who the John Knox. Okay, he uh, thought that Geneva was the most perfect school of Christ, Christ since the Apostolic era. The Presbyterian Church in Scotland has been a daughter of the Reformed Church in Geneva. Okay, so Geneva Church and Scotland Church laid very intimately. The leaders he trained, uh, he was trained under John Calvin in Geneva. So don't forget this. Uh, and Reformation in England. Actually, Reformation in England related with the very uh, the political uh, environment. Okay, Henry VIII. Uh, he want to divorce uh, with his wife, and he want to remarry. But the problem is, the uh, his wife was the anti of the uh, emperor of the the Europe. So the emperor he forced the Pope, you cannot allow divorce King Henry VIII. So actually the Henry VIII he asked to, uh, permission from Roman Catholic Church Pope, but Pope uh, deny, okay, reject, because he afraid the uh, emperor. So, the Henry VIII, he want to separate from Roman Catholic Church. Actually, first time Henry VIII, he loved Roman Catholic very much, but because he loved, uh, he hated his wife, he loved another woman, so he want to separate from Roman Catholic Church. This is the uh, Anglican Church, the starting point of Anglican Church. So Anglican Church's Reformation was not perfect, actually, this kind of the start. But they had a very meaningful fruit from Parliament. Okay? At 3rd November 1640, the Long Parliament assembled. At 1643, the Westminster Assembly was appointed by the Long Parliament to restructure the Church of England. That time, uh, the Church of England and Church of Scotland had very intimate relationship. 
So Westminster Assembly included eight representatives of religious leaders from Scotland. They uh, were some clergymen and some laymen, but they were they were well educated by the doctrine of Presbyterianism. So consisted of 30 laymen and 121 divines of clergymen met for six years, produced the document which are the major confessional standard of the Presbyterian faith. We call this Westminster Standards. Okay? But later, the England, the Parliament of England, refused to accept these uh, confessional standards to their stand of faith. But the uh, Scotland Parliament uh, they accepted this uh, this confession of faith, okay? Westminster standards. So it's very funny. The England England they made uh, this Westminster standards, but they rejected. But Scotland they uh, accept this standards of their faith. So now every where well, the Presbyterian churches, they accept the Westminster standards as uh, their confession of faith. Okay, so now the Bible Presbyterian Church, they has uh, the constitutions. They uh, believe the Westminster confession of faith, and they uh, also believe in. Westminster Shorter and Larger Catechisms. It comes from here, from England. So major confessional standards, uh, there are five the sta uh, standards. The first, Directory of Public Worship. So it means they want to escape from Roman Catholic the rituals. So they made the directory of public worship. It focused on the preaching, not the misa. Okay. Uh, from a form of government, government is a church policy. Okay. This is different from Roman Catholic Church. Roman Catholic Church some hierarchy systems, pope and cardinals, and bishops, and priests, and deacons. Okay? But different. We are only for orders, pastors, duck teachers, and elders, and deacons. Different. In the Westminster Confession of Faith, a confession of faith is uh, for clergymen. Okay? Uh, with this Westminster Confession of Faith, uh, the pastors, they were trained. Because at that time, no theological books and no theological Bible colleges. Okay? So they were trained by Westminster Confession of Faith, pastors. So if you want to be a good, good pastor, you must study very well Westminster Confession of Faith. It's a, a very, very important because it's uh, uh, my ordination. I must swear, okay, to accept Westminster standards as my the stands of the faith, okay. So if I say no, I cannot be a Presbyterian pastor. I must go Roman Catholic or uh, Methodist Church or Congregation Church. But I want to be a Presbyterian minister. I must be swear. I believe the Westminster Confession of Faith, Westminster Larger and Shorter Catechism. Very serious. So if you are the Presbyterian pastor, you must know 
the contents of Westminster Confession of Faith, larger catechism and shorter catechism. Because some confusion in your mind uh, about the doctrine and return back to Westminster standards and reading from beginning to the end and you can have the answer. You are not agree with the West Westminster standards, you must resign from Presbyterian pastor. Go another denomination. It's better for you and better for your congregation. It's very serious. I took the oath only three times in my life. The first, my marriage. The second, my ordination. The third in FABC, Dean Bergen's oath. Only three things. So I swear in the name, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I must keep my oath before the Lord. If I break this, this is sin. Very, very important. So remember, the Westminster Confession of Faith, the Westminster Larger Catechism, the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Don't despise these three standards of faith. It is uh, the, your stance, your the director, okay, of your future ministry in uh, doctrines. So it's very, very important thing. If you study carefully Westminster Confession of Faith, a larger and shorter catechism, if you are not agree, uh, don't, don't be a ordained minister because the, you, in your ordain you must swear. It's why I say this, in USA, they had some troubles because of Westminster Confession of Faith. Someone, uh, I do not agree 100%. Okay, they cannot be a uh, Presbyterian minister. Okay? So, remember... And study hard, study hard the Westminster standards. Okay, not just, oh, I want to be a uh, baptized. Then I have to study the shorter catechism. Uh, after baptism, forget all. No. Uh, Westminster larger catechism is for the adult Christians. The Westminster shorter catechism is for children. But nowadays, all the adults, they are studying shorter catechism. Okay? But the pastors don't know the larger catechism and compassion of faith. So all time, the saints, they are brighter than us. Okay? <laughs> so remember the Presbyterian minister's oath at their ordination. So it's very serious. You must know very well. And worship also, the directory of public worship. Uh, personally, your morning de devotion, uh, know some kind of order, okay? You can use any forms is okay. But public worship, we must have some systematic uh, order according to the Bible. So I do not agree with modern days worship. The singing and dancing and this kind of things. So what kind of thing? Oh, CCM, contemporary Christian music. We cannot use this kind of things for public worship. Okay? And polity. Uh, we are not Roman Catholic, not Episcopal Church. Uh, we are the Presbyterian Church. We have the BOE, right? Board of Elders for each church. And they uh, send the representative to the uh, Presbytery. Presbytery means uh, 
the gathering a representative from the churches. This presbytery. Also presbytery send representative to the synod. Okay. Uh, Singapore Bible Presbyterian Church had the synod, but no more synod. Okay. But also synod send the representative to the a general assembly. So Korea, in Korea, the Presbyterian Church had the, the uh, general assembly. Okay. America also general assembly. And the uh, doctrines, uh, very interestingly, the Westminster Confession of Faith support the bubble plenary preservation. It's very interesting. But I already told you, Presbyterian Church pastor, they took the oath. The Westminster Confession of Faith is their, the standards of the faith. They took the oath, they must obey, and they must agree with the doctrine of the Westminster Confession of Faith. How about the VPP? Is this exception? Who is better? The Westminster Confession of Faith or the personal man? Now he decided, he said, Westminster Confession is wrong, this part. Is he right? No. He took the oath to keep the Westminster Confession of Faith. I believe they are not the Presbyterian minister anymore. Because they broke the, the oath. VPP was supported by the Westminster Confession of Faith. But they had no idea actually what they do. So remember, this is very, very important things.